So very good afternoon and a warm welcome to The Couch right here on uh, Zim Papers Television Network. My name is Howard Musonza and in the studio I'm joined by The Couch Squad, Momo and uh, Mr. Teach. It's good to have you guys. And uh, yeah, I, I know a lot was happening this past weekend. We've got to talk about football. But the moment of my bees, I'm Mr. Teach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it. Good. I it, was, it was something different, but... It was good. It was good to see people out and about, you know, especially after you know the two years we've had with COVID. For me, the biggest question was like, why don't we have so many people coming to to football? Because you think people would like football more than Mabiza, but I guess maybe that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will we'll definitely talk about that. And uh, yeah, I know Mo is, is is really happy because of the next thing that we're going to talk about. So there were plenty. <laughs> matches this past weekend <laughs> and uh, well before we go to the matches what are we talking about on the couch today we are looking at the women's game in zimbabwe what has befallen the women's game you know we talk about past glory i think at the height our ladies national team the mighty warriors went as far as the the, the olympic games in uh, rio de janeiro in 2016 and um we were from then on it was supposed to be you know uh, more development because of that stage that we reached but whatever happened that's why we're here what is even going on in the women's league because we've got the men's league going on that's what we normally talk about what about the women's league what, what's going on with that version of the game is there a league at all are they even playing we were talking about club licensing i think a couple of weeks mm. back and uh, it's mandatory that the premier soccer league teams are supposed to have women's teams what is even going on are they even because we heard fc platinum have got a team around city have got a team but what's going on is there a league a particular league for these teams so that's what we wanted to interrogate today and uh, try to find solutions why is it not that important as the men's game so yeah the couch squad will be looking at it but first let's look at uh, what happened in the Casolaga Premier Soccer League this past weekend and uh, yeah it was a full fixture list and the game started on a Friday and uh, Kremlin Bullets playing against Yada out there in Mutare and Yada getting their was it their third win of the season out there beating Kremlin Bullets then action continued on um, a Saturday. I think the games that then took place on Saturday, I think we, we have to look at probably the game between Chicken Inn and Herentals finishing in a goalless a draw in that game. Why are we looking at this game? Because uh, Chicken Inn are in a tussle for, you know, um, against runaway leaders, Dynamos. And if Chicken Inn had uh, won that game, they would have really been close. They would have Close closed the game, the game yeah. uh, with, uh, with Dynamos. But uh, they only picked up a point. I think this then takes us to the game that Dynamo's played against Malaya City. You think uh, Chicken in faltering, Dynamo's would then take advantage of that because they are playing against a bottom place team. But uh, Malaya City came, they had a different story altogether. <laughs> and that game finishing 1 0. Yeah, a couple of draws in, in that as well. Malaya Chiefs drawing 2 0 with Highlanders. But let's just look at Dynamo's, you know. Yes, they are still on top. I think there is now a two-point gap between them and, and Chicken Inn, but they failed to take advantage of uh, that slip at Chicken Inn. I think for uh, the Glamour boys, this would have been a game that they should have won, especially when you consider their very good defensive record in the early stages of the season. But I think that concern that people have been raising about the number of goals that they're scoring and they're not scoring enough goals, because this time they scored one goal, missed a penalty, and then... You know, bottom of the log. Let's not forget that. Bottom of the log of mm -hmm. Lawyer City were coming from, I think, five-game losing streak. Mm -hmm. You know, you would think all the cards were, were stacked in the favor of uh, Dynamos. But, you know, it didn't really work out. And I think it's something that Ndiraya will be happy probably happened at this stage of the season because maybe it can be a wake-up call. Because I think they'd gone for a run of about six, seven games where it was just business as usual, things were working out for them and this was supposed to be a routine result, but especially with the uh, Battle of Zimbabwe against the Highlanders coming up, always a feisty encounter, maybe a timely reminder, but yeah. Hmm. yeah. I, I will come because that's that probably your next question, but I want to go to more. Because you look at Blair City, bottom of the table, only one win. You look at Dynamos on top of the table, nine wins so far after 14 outings and you would have thought they were just going to stream roll past Malaya City. 
what's what's going on? Are Dynamo's championship material? They are. They are. Uh, their defense, defense, defense win, wins you championships, and uh, strikers win, wins you matches. So their defense speaks a lot about uh, why they are at the top. So they are really championship but material. But two, two, th these past two the games, they have considered two goals. Nine games they've No, won. no, no. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm particularly looking yeah. at these past two games. Yeah, They've yeah, considered two goals. I know. And the, the, the one on, on the weekend, I mean, that was a comedy of errors. Yeah, like nine, nine, there's nothing to be really worried about. Dynamo has played nine games in a row where they've won seven. And last nine games, they've won seven and, and drawn two. And we just want to raise... Uh, uh, our voices for nothing. No, no, we are not it's, raising. It's, it's, it's we normal. want you, we want you to, to break but, this down. But, but are they championship material? They, they are championship material. Remember, uh, Blaue City, last one versus Bozo. So they've got this neck of getting results against uh, the so-called big teams. When they play the other teams that are their age, they <laughs> 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 they play the normal play. But when they play the big teams, they they tend to come. Uh, and, and really give up a good show like they did last right. time. So, so, sorry, Mr. Teach. Uh, I, I just want to draw comparisons yeah. here because I look at a league like probably the English Premier League and you look at the top teams, your yeah. Manchester City, Liverpool. When they play against the smaller teams, they whip no. them. It's a five, no. It's a drubbing. Even go to <laughs> South Africa, Mamelo de Sundowns, the champions. If they play against a smaller team, Mariro. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we would want to give such comparisons because it doesn't What comparisons matter. do you want to give? <laughs> we, we, we have to talk about uh, our local league because there are too many factors that come in with uh, uh, those comparisons that you're talking about. In Liverpool, they've got the top three scorers. In, there's so much... Dynamos does not have... The top goal scorer is not coming from Dynamos. But they are on the top moment. of the log. Yeah, but I'm saying we can't compare them. Okay. Dynamos is Dynamos and they are, that's the way they are playing. They will not go, they will not score three or four goals in any game, whichever team they are playing, uh, whatever they do, on, on whatever day. But so, how much of that then would probably then impact on their title chances? If, if for example, now the, 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 the days where another team dares to score, because right now they've relied on the fact that they have been yes. conceding, I think, seven goals mm -hmm. in, uh, in 13 games so far. Very good record. But... Then what happens if we have a situation like this past weekend mm. where a team, however small, or then equalizes? Then, of course, it goes from three points to one point. Yeah, and, and in the, lo in the long term... Let, let, me, let me even <laughs> buttress that point. Because you look at the, top, the other top teams. For mm -hmm. instance, your Chicken Inn. Mm -hmm. Because they're, right now, their biggest competition is Chicken Inn. They play against Chicken Inn at home and they lose by a goal to nil. Yeah, but... Like so say, they're losing against the, the big teams... And they are also not getting the required points against the smaller teams. So how are they on top? It's just a fluke. It's just yeah, but it's just it's, it's just, just, just it's just it's just one. Team. Fourteen are, weekends are, into yeah, into a, a. But they are on top because they have got a, they have got the best okay. defense, and they are getting goals when 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 they want them. It's unfortunate that uh, during the weekend they got a penalty, and then uh, this gigantic striker just decides to. Get the ball from Nyawa, the usual t penalty taker, and decides to take the penalty himself. Who, who, is, and he misses. who is the usual penalty taker? Nyawa. Where was he? Why did he go for the ball? No, the guy picked the ball. They and don't that have the penalty taker. That That's... guy is a foreign. No, no, no. I, 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 inside information says Nyawa is the penalty taker, and you're supposed to take that penalty. But that guy, because he's foreign, he just picked the ball and appeared like he doesn't hear Shona <laughs> or he can't communicate with the rest. Picked up the ball, just passed the ball to the goalkeeper. The animals would have won. You're watching The Couch right <laughs> here on uh, Zim Papers Television Network. The show brought to you in conjunction with uh, Africa Bet. So, yeah, before we get... Just one thing, Mr. Teach. So, Dynamos drew with uh, Balao City. Yeah. And Highlanders drew with Balao Chiefs. And Mesh Day 15 is coming up. And I think the juiciest of the fixtures that are there, it's uh, uh, Highlanders versus Dynamos. So both teams, I'm sure, they are really hungry. The coach is under a lot of pressure because Tondra Indira was mobbed by fans. And I hear in Blawa, your thing's not really also going well for Mandlam Pofu. What does this do? Does it set up for an entertaining encounter between these two sides? I think we don't, when it comes to the battle of Zimbabwe, Dynamos, Highlanders, you, it doesn't matter where the Dynamos is coming from a seven-match winning streak and Highlanders is coming from a seven-match losing streak. I think it's always going to be an exciting uh, game. But I think the pressure... 
could be on Highlanders a bit more because I think now it's five games on the trot that they've drawn. So wins have been elusive, but then they also draw confidence from the fact that they got a win in the Independence Trophy against the same Dynamos, which was a feisty encounter for Dynamos. I think, you know, it's going to be crucial how Tundurai Ndiraya manages his team in this and this week in the build-up because obviously there was frustration and disappointment uh, from the result that they got over the weekend. So okay. I think it's going to be an entertaining, entertaining game. Hopefully we will have some good refereeing. I think that's my concern. Hopefully it doesn't uh, descend into I the think, frack as well. I think the, the pressure is more on uh, on Tunde. Why? Because uh, he was more by fans. They, they don't really like losing or, or drawing like he did to small. And then they lost to Boso in the Independence Trophy. All right, and whilst, whilst you were there, let's just go back to that game when Dynamos uh, were held by Blaue City. Let's hear from Tondera and Deraya what, what happened. Ah, look, I think it was bad defending from our guys. Um, we made a mistake to concede that corner kick and then we, don't, we failed to defend a corner kick. There's nothing which really pains a coach than conceding from a corner kick, you know. Something which you, can, you have time, you can organize and then defend, defend uh, the corner. But we failed to do that today. But apart from that, I thought we got a penalty, which we were supposed to, to score. But again, we've got regular penalty takers in the team. But again, we, we showed some lack of leadership in the team today. And then they allowed... Um, Albert to take the, the penalty. Of course, he was confident, he took the ball, but I thought we were just supposed to kill the game uh, then. We had a number of chances again today. We did that last week when we played Wawa, created a lot of chances, but we could not take them. Again today, created a lot of chances, but then we couldn't uh, finish them off. So in the end, this is what happens. Um, a lapse in concentration has cost us two points today. So. Look, I'm, I'm so disappointed that um, we considered in the manner that we did today. Then, of course, failing to take um, the chances that, that, that came our way today. It is news enough, considering where we are, we are coming from. Uh, this is a point away from home. We're looking at the performance of Dynamos of late, they have been very, very, very ruthless in front of goal. But we keep our composure. Uh, we, want, we know what we wanted to do. We know they are saying the strongest ch uh, channel. We close it. If you realize today, Billy and the, and the right back, the right channel was off. We were forcing them to play where they are weak. That's, that, that was our game uh, strategy today. So to me, a point away from home. It's, it's my first game. I only trained this team twice, two days only. I think it's a bonus for us. Yeah, indeed, it was a bonus for <laughs> Tawachera and these boys. First game yeah, in charge. Yeah, 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 yeah. first game indeed. in charge after Apilani Nube was shown the exit door. But, but I, I, I felt was, for the guy because he, he was sent to the stands. He eh? was sent to the stands. I, I didn't dis understand. Deservedly. Because yeah, he, he went onto the he went pitch. He went onto the pitch <laughs> without but, the and, authorities. And maybe that could have been the turning point. That could have been the switch. You know, because I think he probably disrupted things, you know, there was confusion. But, uh, and the momentum swung back into... And, and, like, Jose Mourinho is very famous for pulling off stunts like that. I know, you know? I know, <laughs> I know Howard would want us to move on to the next, but he, he, he kept lost in Etmanda. Anyway... <laughs> um, <laughs> That's no surprise given what was happening we, there, Kemp, we throughout are, the week. <laughs> we are talking about the girl child and... Uh, we are looking at what what is what has gone wrong with the women's game in uh, in Zimbabwe because you look at um, the the league itself. Um, yes, it's on, but how much do people even know that there's something going on? Even the the, the stadia they play in is that even the same with the men? Because many times you go to DZ Stadium, you see the girls playing there. Why, why are we looking down upon the women like that? Um, how many teams are, even have sponsorship, for, for example? Who is even supporting? What, are, uh, what is Zifa even saying about the, the, the women's version of the game? And whatever happened to our national team? You know, I was talking about their height of our national team, you know, qualifying for the Olympic Games in Rio in 2016. Why didn't we build on, on such gains? Why a team like Zambia, we've been beating left, right and center, suddenly they went to, to the Olympic Games. Look, why haven't we even, uh, you know, gotten the gains out of, you know, the, the women? Why do we have just maybe one woman or two playing outside the country? 
what's going on? Why are we not supporting? We're talking about club licensing. The teams, how many teams now have got uh, women's teams in, in the PSO? So these are some of the things that we want to look at. But you're watching the couch right here on uh, Zim Papers Television Network. And when we come back, we go deep in this. And uh, Mr. Teach and more will then give us an insight of what's going on. talking about today on the show well we are looking at um, women's football what has happened to the women's game why is it that uh, it is just gone well, I'm gonna use this phrase to the dogs because there is nothing happening is it the problem of Zifa who should be doing what so that we know that you know the women are taken care of so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk, come to you I think uh, let's let's look at it from a holistic point of view what's happening with women's football i think you know you mentioned uh, the mighty warriors and them going to rio and i think from there we we failed to capitalize on the momentum that was gained it ended up being an event as opposed to be a launch pad for what could have been you know a deliberate strategy to push and grow women's football and i think that's the biggest problem there is no deliberate strategy to say this is what we are trying to do with our women's football. These are our ambitions. You know, when we talk about uh, the men's teams, the Warriors, or we, we talk about Kosafa, we talk about qualification uh, to Afghan finals. We have we have goals and targets. With the, with women's football, it's almost like you know whatever happens happens. And I think every single stakeholder, I think, has to take some form of responsibility, starting with us as the media in terms of you know, holding uh, the powers that be to account for Zifa themselves. I mean, we have, of the, of the board members that were there, it was only one who was a woman, and uh, no disrespect to her or anything, but she seemed more like a passenger, even in the, in the, in the process of how the, what the board was working and stuff. So I think we need uh, more deliberate strategies. We need for us to take the game across the country because right now you're asking where do these games play i know some of these games in the women's super league are played at high schools and we're not talking about your former group a schools which have got nice pitches and just don't have stands but you know almost playing on dirt so it's only when it's time for real because they, they made it uh to rio by their own 
force of will. It wasn't because there was a plan to say we're doing this and that and that. That worked. So, and then you remember when they came back, the the chaos that was there. There was no appreciation. They, they, they even struggled to get from the airport to get to the. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, you you've started on something. Yeah. I think more can come in here because we are talking about the height, and we always come back to Rio games, you know. But you also look at a team like Mamelodi Sundowns. You remember the zonal qualifiers for the CAF Champions League, mm -hmm. which was eventually won by Mamelodi Sundowns. Mm -hmm. The Black Rhinos Queens went to South Africa, and uh, they did so well. And at the end of the day, they were beaten by Mamelodi Sundowns, the eventual winners. But you look at that success. You also add on to the Mighty Warriors' success. Can anybody take you know, pride in saying, okay, we have done something for the Mighty Warriors because we have gotten this far. <coughs> Is there any support that is coming? Or did they even get support to even get to the stage where they got to? Um, currently, the, the league is ongoing, the Super yes, League. It's, it's yes, on, yeah. it's ongoing. Uh, they are now on four games. They started last month. Um, and also the Northern region, they are playing. Uh, unfortunately, like uh, my brother here has already said, they are not getting any support from anyone. Uh, including us as the media, yeah, because uh, in, in terms of bringing those who are supposed to be supporting them to book, we are not. In terms of even covering them, you you, do, you don't find any space in any paper about uh, uh, women's football. Fine, it's played at eleven a.m. at Alex Sports Club or just anywhere where there is a pitch, but we are not doing enough, and we should be seen to be doing something and also do do our part. But I think the biggest problem is uh, uh, Zifa and the general administration of the female football. There is no one there who is trying to make sure that these girls are, uh, are catered for and uh, there's a lot of talk going on on them, uh, the sponsorship that is being looked for uh, for the girls, all that there is no one who is spearheading that from the administration of the game itself. What is Barbara Chikosi doing? Barbara Chikosi is supposed to be the board member in charge mm. for women's football. What is she doing? Um, I, I wouldn't want to speak for her. But Nothing. I, but, but, I, but, I, <laughs> that's, but I know... No, no, let's be frank. If we're, if we're going to say we want to hold people to account, then we have to be frank. Because there is nothing we talked about. I think the only money that is we've seen being poured into women's football was that uh, COVID-19 relief fund. And even then, with that particular relief fund, the women's uh, football did not actually get most of that money. So, you know, when you have a representative in that administration and there's not, we're not seeing anything because you can try and say, I don't want to say this and that, but there is nothing. We're not seeing anything. How long did it take for women's football to return? Even though they got the same uh, COVID-19 relief funds uh, from FIFA, it took way too long. We only see it maybe three, four days or maybe a week before there's an international assignment. It's an afterthought. We are not being deliberate about women's football. It's an afterthought to say, oh, by the way, you know, there's a, there's, women can play football as well. As opposed to saying, you know what, uh, let's have a deliberate strategy. I actually believe personally that we could actually enjoy more national success uh, with the mighty words. Because when you look at the gap between uh, teams on the continent, for example, as, as Zimbabwe and some of the more powerful nations when it comes to women's football, it's not as big as we see maybe between a Zimbabwe and a Senegal or a Zimbabwe and an Egypt. So if we want immediate success, this could be an easier uh, route for us to take. And even when you look at globally, the Warriors have never been to a global football competition. The mighty Warriors have. And, you know, and this was almost as a fluke. So it just shows you that in the women's space, if we're deliberate about it, then we can get success, but we, we are not. We just treat it like an afterthought. Maybe it, it, it goes deeper than that. Why am I saying this? Because I remember uh, when um, Andrew Langa was the Minister of Sport, Makosini Shongwana was well, Minister of Sport, and we, we started talking about the sports policy for Zimbabwe. And all these guys were saying, no, we are, we are preparing the, the document, we're preparing the... Do we have a sports policy now? Well, that's one of the great myths of sport. It's about <sighs> with this sports policy where I think 
there's a lot of lip service that's being mm. done mm. in terms of people saying, we want to do this, we're working on this. But in terms of what, but sometimes even if uh, you haven't finalized the policy, you hear rumblings of discussions. This is what we are trying to go. You hear engagements. Ask people in women's football, coaches, administrators, the players themselves. If it is anyone engaged in to say, guys, what is, what is it that you need? What kind of support do you need? Because right now, women's football, I think sometimes you don't even feel like it's a part of uh, ZIFA because they don't even take it seriously themselves. I, I agree because if, if ZIFA, ZIFA was going to take it seriously, club, club licensing was going to be uh, pushed. They were saying, the guys, the Zifa guys, when they came here, they said they are pushing it in phases, the other clubs, these, they are pushing this. But if they really wanted uh, female football to be successful, they were going to push it for all, to make sure that all premier clubs have teams that are participating in the league. If you look at uh, the, uh, the teams that are participating right now, there's uh, Black Rhinos, there's uh, Herentals, there is... Uh, yeah, I think from the Premier League, those are the two teams that are actually participating. Dynamos, Cabs, all the other teams. They don't have teams in that league. Why? Because Ziva doesn't care. If Ziva was going to be serious, mm. Ziva was going to be serious, they would push every club to uh, follow the club licensing rules. Every club has got a, a female team. Every weekend they play. So it, it's very difficult. And because of that, our, our girls, uh, the play has been deteriorating. Even if you see the performance of uh, the last uh, matches, the last games they played yeah, as a national team. Was, was yeah, we, yeah it, it, how can we be knocked by Botswana? Botswana is a minor when we, we talk about uh, the, the ladies, like you were saying. We, we, are, we are supposed to be a heavyweight. We, we were only challenged here in the southern region by South Africa. Otherwise, we were supposed to be that big, but... We do not have the support from the uh, powers that be. Zifa is doing nothing. And the administration of soccer is doing nothing. The clubs them are not doing anything. So no one is supporting the female. So it, it, it takes me back. Because we've got an issue, an unresolved issue um, of our, from, from our football. Sports and Recreation Commission comes in, bans uh, the uh, executive that was running football then. And uh, we've got uh, the councillors, they converged and uh, they booted three members from that executive committee. And I know it's, it's still something. Then what happened on the bigger scale, Zimbabwe suspended by FIFA and, and, and all that. But in everything that was being leveled against uh, um, that executive that was there by the Sports and Recreation Commission, I never heard anything about women's football. That, uh, look, in terms of development for the game, you have neglected the women's game. Are they important? Uh, well, they're not being treated like they're important. Uh, they're being treated like orphans. You look at other associations in this country, in this economy. Uh, you look at uh, Zimbabwe rugby, for example. You see the ladies' teams have been doing quite well. We've seen uh, the ladies' leagues running. I think development programs you hear of rugby being played in far-fetched places like Saumane in Honda Valley. You look at cricket, the ladies' children. This is because the associations, the mother associations have taken the lead to say, you know what, we want to grow. And when you say you want to grow women's football or you want to grow women's sport, you, you're not necessarily doing it because you are doing them a favor, but you are actually genuinely wanting to give. It's about e equity. You know, you want to give equal opportunities to both men and women to have a chance at having sport as a career. But then if we focus on uh, the Warriors, because that seems that seems to be where the focus is. Because we can talk about junior development, we can talk about so many different aspects. When we focus on our football, we think the Warriors. People will make noise because the Warriors have not done this. People will make noise because the Warriors are not qualifying. We, right now, when P you asked what the SRC has said about women's football, everyone's concern, the SRC, the, the fans, is the Warriors can't go to Afghan. That's the conversation. There's nothing about what it's going to do, uh, what football has done, for example, to maybe prevent child pregnancies and you know, to keep women out of certain uh, career paths that might be detrimental to them. There's so many ways that football can be used to uplift not just men, but women as well. And the associations are slipping on the job when it comes to that. And just to add on to that, we're talking about uh, you know, the Africa Women's uh, Cup of Nations, which will be on in Morocco. We were beaten by, by Botswana, and nobody said anything. 
no you uproar, know? no nothing. <laughs> exactly, because look, when we fail to go to something that we've always been going to, obviously we need to look at what went wrong. But nobody is talking about that. Yeah, uh, it's an event uh, as far as they're concerned. And unfortunately for this one, uh, uh, this team was being taken care of by the SRC. So you would expect the SRC to come out and say, no, we tried this and this. Uh, unfortunately, our girls did not qualify and what and nothing. It was like, oh, uh, uh, some, a burden off our back. At least they are off. Because uh, they tried, in terms of camping, they tried, they really put in something. The girls were happy in camp for once. Uh, but after that, that's it. Neglected for good. So I, I, I think what Teach was saying is... Uh, something that's very important. We do not have anything that's deliberate to push the uh, women's game. And unfortunately, Howard, uh, we as the media, we, we, we cover men's soccer. Division one, we cover it more than the national team for women. I don't know why, but this is, it, this is how we are. This is how seriously we look at women's football. It's nothing. I don't know how, if we're going to rank it, we will maybe rank it even um, some boozers leagues are actually ranked higher than <laughs> than right. the women. So when we yeah. come back, we, we focus on the role of media mm. in terms of development for the women's game. You're watching The Couch right here on uh, Zim Papers television network uh, brought to you in partnership with Africa Bet. Stay with us. You're watching The Couch right here on Zimbabwe's Television Network. Uh, you can follow us on our socials. Let's interact. Uh, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the deteriorating standards in the women's game. Do we even have what we call the women's game in Zimbabwe? So we want to focus on the role of the media. The media, we're talking about people like us, ZTN. You know, there are plenty of other media organizations, you know, that also do sport and all that. What is our role and what have we done as the media? I think, uh, if I'm being fair, uh, just like when you asked me what uh, Baba Chikosa is doing, I said nothing. <laughs> I think, you know, we have to be frank because uh, the first step is admitting that we okay, maybe not, not nothing because we're actually having this conversation, but <laughs> I'll say we're not doing nearly enough to try and empower women because the fourth estate, the major responsibility is to hold people to account, whether it's ZIFA or whether it's uh, government in terms of policy, whether it's corporate as well, because corporates always have these uh, campaigns where they're talking about women and empowerment and different sectors of the economy, even women affairs, different ministries can come in and say, you know what, but as the media, I think our primary responsibility has to hold the torch and say, you know what, let's hold the people to account. What is, we've, we've pointed out one thing, there is no deliberate strategy. We start from there. We, we, we hold to the account. You guys are saying you want a sports policy. What does that sports policy say about women's football? Where does it fit in into the hierarchy of needs when we talk about Zimbabwean sports? And we also then have to champion uh, the stories that are there. You know, I think uh, Rudone Shamba recently went to Israel. Israel yeah. to point, that's that we've had uh, uh, several, uh, uh, going Turkey. to Spain, mm. uh, Spain, Spain and Turkey. And Turkey. To Spain and Turkey. Uh, we've had uh, Madzmai, Rutendo Makoro also. So we've had so many stories, but it's almost like, you know, it's at the corner of the back page. It's because when we c celebrate those successes, uh, the way, same way we're thinking back right now, uh, Rio is still imprinted in our mind because we celebrated as a nation. We had never watched a Zimbabwean team play at the Olympics. So that's where we, we lost the plot. We failed to build on the momentum from that. But now, all right, we're sitting back. There's a ZIFA restructuring committee that is supposedly going out and engaging uh, different stakeholders. I think these are some of the things that they're supposed to... Because if you look at the ZIFA councillors, for example, all 60-something of them, how many of them are women? 
Where is the representation for women in football? There's a question. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the representation for uh, women in football? Uh, he brought in the, the, the committee that was brought... Uh, the restructuring uh, committee. That restructuring committee. I don't want to dwell much on that because I, I, I personally think what they, whatever they are doing is nothing. It's not going to be. <laughs> but because there's this politics that's going on behind the scenes where whatever they are doing, they cannot implement it. They still have to come to those 58 councillors, the Zifa councillors, for them to accept it and then be adopted. And then, so whatever they are doing, even if they look at women's football only, it may not be implemented. So I don't think that's one. I, where we should really worry about is the structures should start from zones. Why there are 58 councillors, uh, where the 58 councillors are men is because zones, there are no female uh, in, in, in zone area zones, there are no females in Division 3, Division 5. That's where those councillors are coming from. So as long as football for, for women starts at Super League, then they are not going to to have members represented uh, at council level, so it's also something that needs to be looked at. We need to incorporate them, starting from the grassroots, from where 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 soccer begins. So it's it's really a challenge. So a couple of weeks we were here talking about um, junior development, and um, George Jojo was here, and. We, we spoke about, he spoke about the role of academies and, and how many academies are out there that are solely focusing on, on, on the girls when it comes to football. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would no. want to like, because even if you look at uh, George George's academy, uh, if you go there, of course there are girls that come there to play. But they they are not on their own. They play with 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 uh, with the boys. So there is no deliberate effort to say, I'm going to have my own academy that really deals. With, I, I don't know if there is any, but I I, I I don't I don't remember seeing so is it, such an is academy. It, is it an issue of mindset? Because I look at you, you are you are fathers, mm. and you interact with uh, other fathers out there. Is it, is it uh, an issue of probably a mindset shift that's needed? For this whole thing to make sense, yeah, I think definitely a mindset change is needed because I think we we like to consider ourselves open-minded and say, you know what, the, the same shift what we've seen in most workspaces. I think we need to see that translate into uh, sport and specifically women's football. But there also needs to be a, a system of incentivization to say, you know what. There is already a policy, for example, in terms of the clubs, clubs, club structures, and which means we have a structure of clubs that are existing already. Let's start there and say, where is your women's football team, Dynamos? Where is your women's football team, Manika Diamonds? We, we start there. And even if it doesn't have to start at women's Super League level, but at least have a junior team. Because we have to work with the structures that are there. You know, when women were being pushed into the workspace and people were talking about equity, we didn't say, you know what, let's create a different organization for women so that they can do their stuff. We said, you know what, let's empower them, like, you know, like a women empowerment program for football. To say, but, you know what, if you, as a club, maybe from a government perspective, we will offer tax breaks if you actually have a football team. From the PSO thing, if you have a football team, we are going to reduce your subscription by so and so. We need to incentivize people because if we just say, you know what, oh no, you know, the girl child, what, 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 then people, we're going to have this conversation and people are going to feel like, all right, yes, we've realized what's wrong, but nothing is going to be done. If, if we enjoyed Rio and all its glory, and as soon, not even months later, as soon as they touched down, it was already falling apart. But I just wanted to ask one question to Mr. Teach. Why is it that there are no women at the forefront of fighting for their for for, for their rights in in football? Or, but Richard Kosi is there. That, that, <laughs> where is she? No, at, but you, at, you, at, said, you at, said yourself more. You said yourself the the structures, the, the structures themselves do not allow for women no, to have a say. No, no, you but said it's, when you were it's, talking it's, about the counselors. It's easier for for people to come in to support 
when when people are trying something. No, but, but, but when people but, are busy with their saloons and doing whatever they want, they, <laughs> then how, how do how do we support them? I've got an they, interesting <laughs> one for you. Yeah. I know you've got an, an association of former players because you're a former player. Yeah. Are there women in that association? Yes, they are. <laughs> hmm? Yes, they what are. What are they doing? They are part of the executive committee. They are part of the, we. They are part of the. They, they. So why are they not making noise? Uh, unfortunately, they want to be led. You know, in my experience with those Who women. Who is in that committee? That I, I want. I'm not, I'm not going to disclose any names, <laughs> but I would. But I would tell you that for for the meetings that we have had as former footballers with the women that we have in there, they prefer to be led than to lead. They don't want to 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 be up there giving their what they well, they prefer us to say up. Ah, so for women, we'll give you this, and they are okay with it. No, because so they've not it, been empowered. Uh, who empowers them when just? If if you feel that you are not what, here, you are undermining your rights, why why can you not stand up and say, elect come on? In position of authority. How do you elect? Your, how, how do how do I elect you when you don't want to be elected? No, you, you how come do you to know the forefront. That they don't want to be elected. They are not in a position where they can go for elections. Those that are in our committee, it's by invitation. We have to invite them. But we told them we are, we are forming this, this is what we want to do. It's this. our responsibility then, to make sure that these spaces are I'm, open for I'm them. I'm just saying. Because you the, said, the, you the said women, it was your responsibility women to, should, invite should them, come, women to invite should, them. Women should. You know, it's like you are doing them yeah. a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Listen to what you attitude. sent hey. messages Just. to women. You're saying teams, like uh, you're doing them a favor. Right. This is right. This is this is This is exactly what we did. And they did not come. And then we ended up just... <laughs> Did you question... Do you ever wonder why? Because I think it's... When, it's when, when something has been systematically built to favor a certain section of society, the people who are benefiting from that usually never want that situation to be dismantled. And sometimes you have to take responsibility as the person who's benefiting from that system to say, we are going to let go. Even though they don't want to be led, we are going to put a deliberate policy to say in our players, a Swarma Players Association, it's going to be 50 50. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we can't do that because. Uh, you you we, can't or you don't want? No, no, we can't because it, it, it's no, it will not be a fair representation of uh, what is happening in this country. No, but this is about no, wait, 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 wait. Players. We cannot have 50 50 let's, when, let's when, when there are five teams let's for listen. women and then 500 teams for men. Let's oh. listen to the, to the next couple of women. <laughs> talking about uh, the game itself. There is really no hope for recovery uh, in, in terms of women football in Zimbabwe because no one pays attention to them. If there's a Mighty Warriors game, we don't find more coverage in the media or any anywhere else. And there is no standing Mighty Warriors page on Twitter that maybe tells people what is happening. It is because no one really cares about what the Mighty Warriors are doing and what they are up to. And if you notice, the Warriors themselves are promoted and are treated way better than the women. Um, you find that even those in boards are uh, not willing to be part of commenting and uh, funding and sponsoring the mighty warriors. It is because um, they treat women or they think women are less superior in terms of sport than men. And this is something that needs to be addressed in Zimbabwe and everywhere else in the world. But particularly, can people who are responsible pay attention to the mighty warriors? The women football is not uh, at places that we thought it would be because they are not getting enough support, uh, not just from uh, the relevant uh, organizations and authorities, but also maybe from the citizens. I, I remember I attended the, the Mighty Warriors game uh, to Botswana a few months back, and I felt like those ladies could have done better with much support even from everyone as a nation. And um, moving on forward, I think uh, maybe let's support our young girls as little as nine years, eight years, six years. Let's harness the talent as they are still young and let's keep supporting our women. The lack of attention that the Women's Football League gets is quite sad and rather disheartening. I'll say that as a woman, um, I think that if the Football League for Women was given more attention, I think sponsors would come on board. And I think it's, it actually must be quite disheartening for the players as well. If you look at the men's league, they get more attention. The sponsors are willing to put money there. They get the attention, even on social media. But when you find that the women are playing, it's very rare that you are actually informed as to what games are being played. I think that this is definitely something that needs more attention. I think 
you know, women should not be, you know, pushed to the side in this regard. I think it should be given as much respect as the men are. I mean, they're putting in the work, they're putting in the time, and I think that they, they deserve the, the attention and the respect that the men get as well. So we were talking about, you know, what the women are doing themselves and uh, listening to those ladies, the key issue, one, we spoke about the media. What role is the media playing in terms of, you know, conscientizing the public about what the women are doing? And uh, the other issue, mm. it's got to do with sponsorship. <coughs> yes, we have been talking about lack of sponsorship for men, but is there any sponsorship for women? They, they used to be Glow. Glow used to sponsor uh, the league for women here. Netball, but you, you say? They, they, also, yeah, they also gave in a little bit to, to football. But uh, what I want to say is uh, for, for a sponsor, uh, you, you just put your money where there is value, where you see value. So, you, so, so in, when, a, in a sense, you're saying there is no value let in women's football? They, okay, there, there is little value at the moment. And because I'm, I'm looking for numbers. Let's say I'm um, like our um, Castle Premiership. They are there because of the numbers. You just want to look at the blockbuster that we have at the weekend. There will be uh, thousands glued on the screens, thousands on, on or, or at the stadium, and there's a lot of vibe around. Actually, as, as of yesterday, we have already, as media, started pushing that match. Uh, Battle of Zimbabwe, Battle of Zimbabwe. This is what the sponsors want. For a match that is being played at uh, Alan Wilson under the trees where there's, uh, the players are not even, uh, they don't make even 18-18 per, per team, you have, um, I, if I'm not getting value, I'm not going to put my money there. So the sponsors will never come until there is value. And I think you have to build it and they will come. I think we've seen it in so many different other aspects. Yes. You can say maybe because of the way we've treated it as the media. We have not given any coverage. Uh, Zifa has not offered support. We heard the women who were talking uh, in those interviews uh, saying, you know what, they feel like, you know, they're less than. So we have to then take a deliberate path to say, you know what, let's build the football and leverage the systems that are there. The but Castle Lago Premier Soccer League, we can even have a situation where we say, you know what, let's have the women's soccer league games as the curtain raises but, but, to uh, the men because we want to create <laughs> don't laugh that, that would never happen you know, you Why? know that would never happen it would never happen because, because from a men's game perspective women will never play a match before before if, if why, why, it's, why, it's why can't there. it happen why it, it, can't it, it, it has always no, been no don't just no, say no. it's been there why it's, can't it happen the, the, why can't it happen the, tra the, the, food, the tradition. soccer tradition so we have to break that tradition what tradition we can't we can't have women running we can't have women running on the pitch before our match, well, so, it will so, never be allowed. Okay, well, so we, in, as, no, in as much as we may want to talk and, yeah, uh, and uh, appear as if why? everything is normal, Break we, it down for we, us. We, we, we are talking like people who have, we have not been in that uh, <laughs> football for attending. When you get in there, you find out not even one team will allow uh, the m women to play their match before the, the, the main and match. Those are the can, things can we need we, to break down. Yes, can we put it, that, it, that, it, that, it, that day and because there's no say, logical reason for that. Yes. There is no logical reason you're for that. You're failing to explain. You're just saying tradition. It's just, it's just tradition? been happened. Whose tradition? Whose tradition? Uh, you guys, you just you know what I'm talking about, but you just no, trying no. to be <laughs> difficult. <laughs> you know how many women? How many women are in in this football right now? This is the culture we need to how break. How many women are, are okay? How many women sit at the bench? Uh, for for the Premier League teams, how many? You can count them one, two, three. We've maybe. had female assistant uh, referees. Uh, uh, assistant referees. We, have we are talking we have, about we've teams. Had female journalists at the grounds. Yes, have, right? Right? Okay, yeah. guys. Let, 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 let yeah. me tell you something, guys. They are, Why they are beliefs. They are beliefs. They, yes. they are beliefs. They. Yes. Grace, Grace that, Gimo yeah. is the referee for Herentals and whatever, yeah. and she is running with the men. No, the referees. There's no problem. Why? But What's you, the difference? You will not have. Ah, okay. We can talk this again in 10 years' time, <laughs> and you tell me a match that will have uh, been played, a Premier League match that would have been played with a female team kitten raising. It will never happen. And the, No, but I'm saying like, if uh, we want to fix our game, if we want to empower, we need to, because these are just myths that we're feeding into, these are just uh, traditions, because we were speaking, Howard was asking us, you know, why haven't we supported women's football? And it is reasons like this where 
he can more can't even explain. I, I explained. <laughs> I explained. But but you you guys you also fail to understand that as media as well, in as much as we would want to support the the women, we are also in it for the money. Eh? If I am going to put my headline as uh, Mufakos the Queen's Place, they, who is going to buy my newspaper? All right. If I, do you want me to cover Mufakos the Queen's versus Black Rhinos when when Dynamos is playing caps? That's why it would be we good need for the money. We are in the need for the money. Caps, and then people realize, oh, yeah, there's I'm, a fucking sequence. I'm sure we can go on and on. <laughs> we need a part two, and, you know, so that we, he can explain the tradition. Yeah. And what, what I the think we need a whole that. show for that. Exactly. <laughs> right, anyway, thank you guys for coming through. Uh, Mr. Teach and Mo, always giving us uh, your valuable insights into, into the game. And uh, today we were talking about the women's game, what has happened to the women's game in Zimbabwe. My name is Howard Msonza, the couch back again next week. Thank you very much for watching.